let's talk a little bit about Jamboard. Now, I'll tell you the need for Jamboard showed up in my district simply because teachers wanted to be able to write and show their kids stuff. They'd be holding things up like, hey guys, can you see this? Is it clear? Can you see it okay? Is it backwards, right? They'd be teaching online, but sometimes it would be very difficult to show their writing or show what it is they wanted to show. So Jamboard became a way for us to show writing online because even if you put a whiteboard behind you and you write this way while you're online, sometimes that can be um, challenging because maybe the camera reverses it. So Jamboard became a way that we could show writing, show math live through the computer. Because even as a kindergarten teacher or as any kind of early childhood teacher, you know there's a big difference between showing the letter B, right? I have a letter B and I show a printed letter B and actually showing the letter B being formed, right? Letter formation. Uh, Lauren asked a question, Jamboard is best for touch screen, so right? Oh, I'll tell you, um, it, it, it can be nice for Jamboard, but uh, I have, you know, hundreds of K2 kiddos who use Jamboard pretty much daily and we do not have touchscreen. So it's not necessary at all. There are a lot of things you can do without a touchscreen in Jamboard. And hopefully right now I'll show you a number of those, right? You'll see that Jamboard is good for any, uh, any browser. So Jamboard is a tool. It's a part of the core Google suite. Uh, you may not realize that it's been there for a while. You've, it's hanging out in your Google Drive. There's a number of ways you can create Jamboards, but let's go take a little bit like of an exploration before we talk too much about the mechanics. I'm about to have uh, Kim give you a link, not yet, but she's gonna give you a link and it's gonna open this up in a new tab. So in a minute, Kim's gonna give you a link. I'll let her know when, and it's going to open this up in a new tab. So in a minute, you're gonna click on something and it'll take you into this Jamboard and it'll look a little something like this. And this is a Jamboard. We're gonna do a collaborative Jamboard activity in just a minute, and you're gonna join me here, but I wanna show you the tools first, because on the first level, you're gonna jump in here and you're going to engage with my Jamboard. Now down here, I have some tools. There are tools here in the Jamboard and um, uh, a pen tool. I'm gonna to use the sticky note tool first, but the toolbar is over here. So. This task says vote. Are you team cat or team dog? This is kind of a low, simple question just to get familiar with this tool. I'll click on the sticky right over here. It's the little square. I'm gonna type my name. Now if I want, depending on the device, some devices use an emoji keyboard. And if you teach young learners, you know that emojis, may, they may not speak words, but they certainly speak emoji, right? So let me go ahead and hit save there. So you notice I have a choice of colors uh, and I can save that. And what I can do is click and drag my sticky to cast my vote. In a minute, you're gonna do this very thing, but I wanna give you a little bit more of a tour of a Jamboard before I send you into it. So again, Jamboard being a tool, part of the Google Suite, Jamboard is something we can use synchronously. Right now we're gonna use it synchronously, but I'm gonna show you a way in a couple of minutes that your learners can complete these asynchronously as well. Uh, simple tools. Now in a Jamboard, in a bit, once we get going, you'll see that there are some, some frames. Up there it says one of 10. That means like pages. I'm on page one. And as we get going, I may ask you to change pages. So to do that, see where it says one of 10, you'll click on that. And then you can toggle between a few different frames or pages. So we're going to start on frame one. Now, I want to give you this Jamboard, but I have to make sure that it's set up right. If you're familiar with the Google Suite in general, you know that there's a whole thing about sharing rights and you share a document to people so that they can edit it too. So you have to make sure your, your Jamboard is set up in a way that others can edit it. So different ways to share in Google, but I wanna go through here and double check. This one says that anyone with the link can view. View, uh-oh, you won't be able to write on my Jamboard. I wanna give you a pen to my Jamboard. So I'm gonna change this from anyone with the link can view, and I'm gonna use the drop-down menu, um, menu so that anyone with the link can edit. I want you to be able to write on my Jamboard in a minute. So I switched my sharing rights so anyone can edit. And now when you guys get into this Jamboard, Kim's gonna kind of drop a link for you. And when you get in here, I'd love it if you click on the link, go grab a sticky note and type your name. Now some things that happen right now, you know when all of your kids try to go through the door at the same time, it's just a backup crowd. If you get a message about too many people, I'll tell you, will be okay. Just try to load it again. Just like when all of your kiddos try to go through the door, we, we don't get anywhere. 
if you get that message about too many people, just refresh. Go ahead and click over on the left-hand side. You'll see a sticky note. Go get yourself your own sticky note. Type your name and then cast your vote. Are you team puppy or team kitty? Just FYI, this cute guy, that's my dog, Sheldon. So go ahead and click on the link. Type your name and slide it around to cast your vote. We'll get more academic soon, but I just want you to get familiar with the toy, with the tools and toys. <laughs> click on the link. I'll give you a moment and go ahead and stay on this frame and we'll talk some more about this before we move on to some additional activities. There we go. Awesome. It's great to see people in there participating, voting. You know, so when you're talking about your learners, this could be, how are you doing today? And one side could be happy emoji and one could be sad emoji. Or maybe we have four corners, one sleepy emoji and one's nervous emoji and one's excited emoji uh, right there. So that's a great question Alicia just asked. Alicia asked, is it possible to keep a, a master so kids can't move? So one thing about Jamboard we're going to discover as we go through here is that it's a very simple tool. And when it comes to locking things down, this isn't the tool that can do that. If you want some of those features, Google Slides would be the right one for you. I love Jamboard because of its sweet simplicity. There are some features, though, that um, I wish it could do. But you know what I do in that case, Alicia? I teach kids undo. Oops, I deleted it. Guys, let's go find the undo button. Up here, that little backwards arrow, fix it. You accidentally deleted, bring it back. So we've got the basics here. You learn how to use a sticky. Let's talk about a little bit more. Those of you who are live in the Jamboard, which I can see there are a number of us, we go ahead and click on the that frame there that says frame one of 10 and jump over to frame two. When you get to frame two, you're gonna see some things there. Don't click on any of them yet. We'll talk first. It's kind of like when you put a box of markers in front of kids, what do they all do? They all go grab at it. <laughs> I'm gonna say, hold your, hold your manipulatives for just a second. Join me on frame two. And here we see an additional um, example of that same thing. Now, if you don't see me right now, that's okay. You don't need to see me. Go ahead and just stay on frame two of that Jamboard. Um, early learners, pre-K, K, even first grade if this is the first time. A scaffold I use is that sometimes I'll have my students' um, names already on the stickies, right? It saves that moment where they have to go in and type in their name. By doing this, again, just a quick way to make this easier for my kids in the first few times we're doing this. We don't have to learn how to type our name. We could just find our name. So if I were to say, hey, Kim, will you vote for your favorite? She could go find her name and it would slide and slide it right over where she needs to be. So just a scaffold would be that I could have their names pre-populated there. So continuing on, will you go ahead and now join me on the amazingly blank frame three? Go ahead and click again. Come on over. We'll get more academic in a second. I want to talk about Jamboard and I want to talk about devices. So that, that question was raised about, do I need a touchpad? And truth is, you know, there are things that are always make it nicer when you have a touchpad. I'm on frame three. Hold your pen for a second, but know that we're going to do some art together in just a moment. I'm going to go over to the pen tool on the side and I notice that I can um, do some math here. And so I can do this as uh, math. Now I'm using my keyboard touchpad right now just to start. But know that I can also use an iPad. So uh, when I have a second device, and sometimes people will have that second device available, um, on an iPad or an iPhone or an Android phone, you can actually download a Jamboard app. And then I can use my uh, stylus or other device to solve the math problems as well. So if I wanted to use a second device, I could do that. But I could also use my tools to solve my, my math problems. Um, live with kids and again, so they can watch the process. We could talk about how to break problems down, how to decompose numbers. I can work on the math live. Now, while you're in there, if you're on frame three, those of you, I see a lot of you hanging out on frame three, will you go ahead and grab a pen? Let's do a little bit art for together for a second. Go grab a pen and just make a squiggle scribble, say hi, draw a happy face, whatever you wanna do. Go ahead and give it a little shot and notice that we are working collaboratively. Now, you can have up to 50 learners collaborating in Jamboard at a time, um, but it is, uh, it's a little bit of, of chaos, right? You know, sometimes I do like to have this moment when it's kind of free and crazy, just so they can get it out of their system. Um, it is nice to be able to just try, practice, uh, see what it's like. Oh, I see someone's making a tree. I see happy faces and stars. Looks like we're getting some... Oh, I see a puppy over there, very cool. Give you about five more seconds, make another scribble, maybe change your pen color if you haven't done that. 
five, four, three, two, one. Awesome. Go ahead and lift your pens. And now we're going to get slightly more academic, right? Slightly more academic. Join me on frame number four. And here you see I have a phonics lesson. Now this phonics lesson is going to be great. Touch screen or not, synchronous or asynchronous, I'm currently showing you my screen. So if you're in the Google Meet, you can see me and my screen. If you're in the Jamboard, you can see the screen, right? Where we can do it either way. And so I can use this just as a presentation tool. I don't have to have my learners collaborating with me. If I'm in the Google Meet, they can just be watching. So let me go ahead and um, put this out here. And here I go, I have my three letters. We're talking about ig words and I can use my laser pointer and I can sound this out. Ig, what's the whole word? Ig. So I can use this in my small group instruction. So what I like about Jamboard here is it's very lightweight, very smooth, not a lot of extra buttons. You know, we're having this conversation here about what we can lock um, and what we can't lock. You know, the cool thing about Jamboard, you know, the, the writing tools, the highlighting tools I'm about to show you, there's some features that, that slides don't have, but it is very nice to um, be able to just do this lightweight and easily. With young learners, I like sometimes when there's not too many buttons for them to, to push there. If you're in there, if you want to try to slide one of those stickies around, people will say, how did you get these letter tiles in here? And the truth is, it's just a sticky. Just like all the other text in uh, a Jamboard, I added a sticky. Now, those of you who accidentally made a line, that's OK. Use your back button, your undo button, and it'll erase it away for you. Or you could use the eraser tool to do that. That happens when you're, you're in the pin mode and you go to drag something. When you're in the pin mode and you go to drag something, um, instead of being in the pointer, right? So we can build some word tiles. 